Good evening. Welcome to Christian Fellowship. My name is Mike, and today is April 2nd, 2020, and it's um, 8.39 p.m. Uh, how's your day going today? <laughs> Another day of lockdown, right? We can go out. What are they going to do? They're going to say, well, you got to go back. But I see a lot of people out walking around. I don't see police stopping them. And uh, I've been watching some of the stuff on videos. People have been going out to these hospitals and things in a lot of different states. And uh, the news people, all the stations, they're controlled by mainstream medias are professing that hospitals are overrun, the lines are out the door, and people are going out with their cell phone cameras and this isn't true. There's something smelly in Denmark, folks. And we're in a position where we gotta watch it very carefully and then make some decisions in our lives. Yeah, we know. I never thought I'd, I'm 75. I never thought I'd be making these decisions. But anyway, one decision you can make that everyone should make, including all these people on this internet, no matter what your thoughts and beliefs are, is to choose freely to follow the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the more time you spend with Him, the less time you spend watching all this charade that's going on before your eyes. Because see, Jesus isn't a charade. He's a reality. That a lot of these people in this charade don't truly understand, or they don't believe it. They believe that he's a fairy tale that made up. Now, I was one of those people. <clears throat> I always believed in Jesus, but never but uh, in 2001, his actual spirit came into a little trailer I was in with my wife. She was there. And on that day, he changed my life forever. He talked to me, told me that my whole life had been meant to be. But I couldn't have done anything to change it. That kind of, as the Bible tells us, all this was pre-written. His creation is his creation. He has the ending. No man can change that ending. No devil or Satan can change that ending. It can't happen. That's an impossibility. So this world does end. I mean, we all die at some point in time when our name comes up in the book that he wrote. And we'll die in the manner that he tells us. And until that day, the best thing you can do is spend a lot of time with him, asking him to teach you and giving your whole heart, soul, mind, and strength to the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the first commandment. And then he added, love your neighbor as yourself. And that's it. That encompasses the Bible basically from the first page to the last. I got a friend and I were reading the Bible. We're up into... First Samuel. Fascinating. I, I've never read it. We're actually using an audio version so we don't have to read the words because the pronunciation on a lot of the, uh, the words is very, very difficult. Um, and we just discuss our thoughts that he, you know, he's sitting there with us. He's our teacher. Most people go to a pastor or a priest or a rabbi or wherever they go and say, would well, you teach me about God? Well, that's great. And I'm sure that a lot of them try to do that. But do they have that real connection like Moses had, like Joshua had, like other prophets had? Do they, like Paul had, do they have that connection with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Well, if they don't, then their teaching can be inaccurate. 
and it wouldn't be that they're doing it inaccurate or trying to do it accurate. They think that this is what, that's what they were taught if they went to seminary school or whatnot. My personal view now, after after the Lord has been teaching me, and I'm probably the worst student in the world, um, the only people that should be teaching anybody about God's Word is born-again Christians who have that personal connection and have been chosen by the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Anyone else, although they want to be, it's still the choosing is up to you. You cannot choose yourself. You can't. He has to choose you. You can be ready. You can study that Bible and sit patiently and wait and hope and ask him, Lord, please save me. You know, choose me. But that's 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 the end of the old your possibilities. The next possibility is his choice. And he may not choose you. But you're still but you're still going to be saved. Right at the last second, maybe. But you have to you have to put forth some effort. And that's where I don't see a lot of people, even a lot of Christians say they put forth a lot of effort. You know. I mean, I know the Christians, and I, I have to, you know, say, that's good. You know, you go to church every week. Why don't you spend every day thinking about the Lord, talking to him all day? And a lot of them would probably say, no, that's not necessary. My pastor and my priest says, that's not necessary. A lot of people call me a crook. They call me a crook. I said, thank you, Jesus. They called him a crook. Okay. Who are they to tell Jesus or Yahweh the Father who they're to choose to do their work here in this flesh broken world? They're not capable of doing that. Okay? I don't know why he chose me. It wasn't through my good deeds. I'm no way. Because I didn't have any. Well, maybe I had a few, maybe. But I have more bad ones. And I wasn't trying to be a bad person. I was just trying to enjoy myself. I thought that's what, but see, life is much more than that. And some people, you know, they just, they don't, uh, you know, I have this book. When I met the Lord that day, my wife was in the room. She did not experience what I experienced. She watched me experience it. But she did not experience the same thing. I heard the voice and repeated what the voice said to her. She knelt trying to rub my legs because I was crying so hard. And it wasn't crying of fear or sadness. It was tears of joy. Everybody has a soul. And everyone's soul is looking for the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when he allows that soul to find him, and he chooses us. The elation, people, is off the Richter scale. You know then that he is real. That he did walk the earth. Truly. That he did die. That he was resurrected. That he can pass between that world, the spiritual world, and the flesh world at will. And after you go through this elation, you you want to tell everybody. All of a sudden, you realize, oh, oh. I ain't finding a lot of people who really believe this. You know. They all say, oh yeah, we know. Oh, you do. Well, why aren't you practicing it? You read that Bible. That Bible will tell you how to live. And even I, I'm. I have, I don't even know, at 75, I don't know how much more time I've got to learn this. He, he knows, you know. He, might, he can give me a lot of time, or he can take it away tomorrow. You know, 
know, he chose me. I may have completed what he wanted me to do, and I'm just waiting out my time. I don't know. But I do know that certain times during the day, if something happens, and my spirit knows that was for him. I'm still experiencing those. Not all the time. You know, I've watched uh, my, my wife's health aid. She lost her credit card, lost her wallet. She was almost in tears. I mean, she, 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 had, she takes care of foster children. And they all have IDs. And all those IDs are in that wallet. So now we've got a big problem. She's got, you know, she's really upset. And I have a picture, you know, picture written, painted by a uh, graphic artist or painter or whoever. Probably a graphic artist, probably a certain, uh, another kind of picture. It's beautiful. It's a picture of Jesus as man says he looks. Maybe that's exactly how he looks. Maybe it's not. I don't know. I've never seen him. But I have experienced his presence. And I'm going to tell you right now, 100% the truth. In the presence of the Lord Jesus, Jesus, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, is all peace and love and joy, period. There is nothing else, folks. Of course, in that you have everything. He is the beginning. He is the end. He is everything in between. Everything that happens to us is done for our good. Everything. Even when we think we're running the show and doing great. No. Oh, we have free will and we could do that. And a lot of times he has to say, okay, well, time to stop. Well, now I got to take you this way. And it's traumatic. But the Bible tells us when those times come, when those forks on the road and he says, you're going this way. You say, I don't want to go that way. You should say, thank you, Jesus, because he knows the right way. You don't. None of us do. And none of us are worthy of the gift of being born again. None of us who do not deserve it is strictly by his grace. You can have a trillion altar calls. And unless Jesus opens that person's eyes. And if he does, then that person, you'll hang around with that person. You will, you will be able to see that he actually did meet the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some don't even know it. I, I think that happened to me. I think I met him a couple of times. But this time in the trailer, I knew it. I told my wife. She said, what's wrong? Tears were running down my eyes. I said, it's Jesus. It's really Jesus. Straight. <laughs> you know, I tell you, I wish that for everybody. But then again, it, it, it stops from that point. After the elation and everything you know, wanes down, then you realize you have a lot of things to get rid of. He has a lot of cleaning to do inside you. you know, a lot of weeds. You got to be root uprooted. A lot of them are weeds you enjoy. I pull it out and let him take control. That's what the world, not everyone, I mean, there are a few, met a new friend, possible new friend anyway, and uh, humble, forgiven. So I, I already know in his screen name, he's been forgiven and he knows he's been that's what I believe. Now, maybe I'm wrong there, but I, that's the way I, I really do believe that. So I gave him my email address, and in time, if he feels, we'll have an email. You know, I, and I lift it up to the Lord, and that's it. As praying is another thing. You only need to pray once on any subject. And then if you bring that subject up again, you're actually insulting Jesus. Because by bringing it up again, you're telling Jesus he didn't hear you the first time. And Jesus doesn't miss a sound from our lips or anybody's lips or the world itself. And he never forgets. Ever. 
you get born again, your, your, your whole life is opened up to eternity. That's how you're going you're gonna to walk with you forever. Do you know what a gift that is? Unconditional love. Unconditional, folks. Most never will understand that. I don't care how religious or anything, I'm sure. You have to really surrender everything to him. All right, let me give you some inspiration. Because when I, I had to ask for a book to read, because I didn't have a book. And uh, he sent a book called God Calling. This is not from God Calling. This is from another book after that by a different person. I like God Calling because it was by two women in 1932 that met the Spirit of the Lord, as I did. So I know that what they say is true. But religious leaders, they think it's an occult and that it couldn't possibly be biblical and whatnot. You know? Now, I know they're wrong. But I know I'm not going to be able to convince them they're wrong. Because they're already set in their minds and their ways that they know what God is talking about in the Bible more than anyone else. There's no way to explain to people. How do you know the storm is hot? Well, most of us put our hand up to it. We can feel the heat. And the really <laughs> silly ones touch it. And then they get burnt. But sometimes that's the way we are. That's the way we learn. Inspiration. Let's get back to this. And this is the Lord speaking. It, okay. To this person, whoever it is that wrote these words down. Okay. All Bible referenced. You can read those sections. You might get something totally different. Okay. So the Lord says, I have promised to meet all your needs according to my glorious riches. He does that throughout the Bible. Only in Samuel 1, and he's promised the Israelites, you know, meet all their needs. So you know that that line is true, because it's in the Bible, without a doubt. Your deepest, most constant need is for my peace, absolutely. Because without his peace, you have nothing but confusion and uncertainty and fear. And fear is what the devil uses the most to keep control of us. I have planted peace in the garden of your heart where I live, but there are weeds growing there too. Pride, worry, selfishness, unbelief, devil, in all of us. Hard to get out too. So, you know, if you ever had a house and a yard, try picking the weeds. They make weed killers. So that will. That will kill them. But then it also kills the grass, kills other things. So you try picking them up, digging them up, and it come back up a lot. Because the birds fly over and they drop the weeds on your lawn and they sprout and they come back up. People don't know how to, they don't get that. Okay, I am the gardener. So he's the gardener. So he's going to take care of your yard. And I am working to rid your heart of those weeds. I do my work in various ways. When you sit quietly with me, I shine the light of my presence directly into your heart. In this heavenly light, peace grows abundantly. And weeds surely. I also send trials into your life. When you trust me in the midst of trouble, peace flourishes and weeds die away. Thank me for the troublesome situations. We need to do that. I try to remind that of my wife, myself, myself, and other people. The peace they can produce far outweighs the trials you endure. It's all about peace. He is peace. He is love. And he is all joy. Great words, great inspiration. You can find references for every one of those words read in that book of the Bible. 
So, but some don't want you, they want to control you. They want to be, tell you what God wants of you. The only one that can truly tell you what God wants of you is God himself. And he's more than willing to do that. In fact, it brings the greatest joy to him for you to take time, which he's given you, and give it back to him. The greatest joy of his heart. So if you really want to make the Lord Jesus happy, then give up time that he gave you and give it back to him as your gift back to him, as your sacrifice. As in the Old Testament, they had you know, sacrifices in the uh, tent of the congregation, on the altar, and the, you know, all that. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Um, keep going. No stop. Those that persevere to the end, they will be saved. Sometimes persevering might get really hard. And I think we're, in a, we're looking at times right now in real time, in life, where some of those hard times are going to be coming up on us. Okay, it's 2126 for minutes. I am going to cut this off. Love, joy, and peace to all. And uh, humbly forgiven. I thank you for getting back with me. Thanks. Because I, I, I sometimes write to, I don't write to everybody, but I just happen to be scrolling down in the comments because I don't get many hits. I don't, I, that don't bother me, but I'm going down. I see this, oh, one comment. Okay. So I looked at it. It was you. So I got back to you. And that, actually, it was a video from way back a ways. And uh, now we kind of bounced back and forth a little bit. And I gave you my email and my phone number. And uh, that's why right. we put it up to the Lord. So it's, it's a done deal. And whatever happens, I'll tell you one thing. I'll see you in heaven. Okay. Then we'll know each other. But we have an opportunity here, too, to encourage, and inspire, and help each other. I have a friend in Rhode Island that I do that with nightly. Okay. And um, anyone else you know, give them the link to, to my uh, site. And every day, I try to, I don't, I don't get one every day now like I was. But I need to get back with that. I also got to get on public access TV. I'm in Florida, Massachusetts. That's where... My wife and I live right now. Uh, where the good Lord's going to put us next or leave us here, I don't know. I don't worry. You know, I, that, that tends to creep in, but he keeps pushing it back out. And the easiest way to push it back out is pick up the Bible and spend some time with him. Or just sit with him. Don't even have to take the Bible. He's already written it on your heart. You know. All right? I will see you tomorrow if his will says so. Peace. Bye-bye.